we survived a Friday. We have, we have. We well, we've survived two Friday. We'll see if we get through it with all the storms coming through this evening. But. <laughs> Man, it's been a it's been a crazy week this week. Well, you know, we always talk about how Mississippi weather is weird in general, but we've we've actually had winter the first couple of days, then we had you know a little bit of a spring, and now it's going to be hot and stormy. So. Yep. We're just going to celebrate all the seasons this week and we'll see where <laughs> we go next week. Went from 20 something degrees to 80 something yesterday. That's nice. Yeah, and last week we actually had some warm days. Uh, that's what I told my wife. I said, we, we went from running the heater with jackets on, mm -hmm. uh, cold at every stop, to trying to blast the air conditioner yesterday evening because it was too hot. So that's true. I don't know. It's it's playing a toll. You can see a lot more people having sinus issues and stuff. But mm -hmm. we'll get through. It's supposed to be a pretty weekend, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Man, those wrenches right there is long, ain't they? They are long, and we actually have um, some metric sets as well. Holy um, cow! That's some. Let's take a lengthy son of a guns there. They are. Uh, I like them because you can see here it's got an offset there. Mm -hmm. And just, I mean, of course, flex head on this side. You're going to get the torque on it, that's for sure. Uh, like I said, we do, we've had trouble getting the long wrenches. We, if you're back. Are those 12 pointer splines? Uh, splines, I do believe. Yeah. But, uh,. Pretty awesome. Uh, we Mako's had a hard time getting the long wrenches uh, the last several months. I've I've had one guy that's just been as patient as he can be, and uh, I finally had a metric set on the truck yesterday, and he took that chance to to grab it up while while they were there. Yeah. Um, which I've got three or four more sets of them coming in, so I'll have plenty of them. But just with that offset on one end and then mm -hmm. the uh, swivel on the other, it gets you into some tight spots and it gives you the leverage. Uh, They're not nice good overall. Them. That's for sure. Well, what all cool new stuff you got this week? So we do have some different charade knives. Uh, we do have the, the adjustable wrenches here. Mm -hmm. um, People are really liking how, how small they are and how big they'll get. Um, good thin handle on them. We also have the grip edge. I know that I know y'all are gonna see that in the video. Um, man, those are some awesome things. Yeah, they are. Uh, greatest thing since sliced bread, if you just wanna be honest about it. But oh, they, everything they, they make's good, you know, like I know what's coming in the next round and it's just as impressive as <laughs> As the hex bits, you know. So I watched a video on that, and I know Mac. I mean, you correct anything I say wrong here because I'm not 100% on everything. But Mac had the exclusive for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, so my customers that's had Mac dealers, uh, they're hopping on them right away. Yeah. My customers that haven't had had the Mac dealers to do the background work of explaining it. Mm -hmm. um, they think it's just a regular Allen. It is definitely not. The, the design of that, um, with the way that it's cut and everything, it can. it's an extractor as well, so mm -hmm. it'll get, what is it, 90% rounded out? Well, uh, I think where Mac kind of failed on the launch of these, right? And, and now this is just me giving my thoughts. There right. ain't no scientific, analytic, tool guru data that's come down the chain. This is just my thoughts, right? So. I think where Mac failed is when they sold the original RBRT hex bits. I think they failed because they only focused on them being used as an extractor. Nah. Like guys would get to the point where it was so bad stripped out with other hex that they wouldn't, they would use them and obviously at that point it's in really, really bad shape, right? Yeah. So. I think the magic of those is to use them first to prevent the stripping. Right. But also, guys forget about the extraction capabilities when they do it, right? Because I hear a lot of guys, well, I don't need the SAE set. I don't need the SAE set. I only want the metric set. I only want the metric set. So the, the whole key to that is if you've got a four millimeter that you're working on, and let's say the guy before you stripped it out, 
what size is that four millimeter at that right. point, right? So you can't drive a five into it. Yep. So you need the SAE to kind of fill the gaps when it comes to that. So. Well, see, and that's what I think extractors fail most of the time because most of the time with extractors, you have extractors, that's it. Yep. There's not really a size. Uh, and I think you have that to where, like you said, there's that in-between size where mm -hmm. it's not yet a three, it's not a four, so you're definitely not gonna drive a five in it. And that's where you miss it. But what I've been showing everybody on this is because the first thing they do is they stick it right into the rounded one and they go, yep, that's good. And it, and you can see there's no play in that uh, rounded portion there. Right. But what I've been ever, telling everybody to pay attention to is go to the one that's good, stick it in there. Is there mm -hmm. any play? No, there's no play. And the, the guy that did the video um, that I watched online, uh, I believe he works for Grip Edge. He was talking about how it was designed because of the way that it meets uh, in the new one, it will not round the new one. Yeah. So I have a sawmill on my route that's been begging for something like this because the part that they have to take off uh, is a $800 part. Holy and cow. there's like 200 on this portion of this sawmill. Um, there's 200 up top or 140 at the bottom. There's Anyway, you get it. There's about a 400. Yeah. yeah, there's about 400 <laughs> of them. And uh, he said that three, four times a week, when the maintenance man goes to change one out, because they can, when they go bad, you can change it out, send it off. It the the bolt actually rounds inside there. The hex rounds. Well, then they have to cut through that unit. Once you cut through it, it's no longer able to be rebuilt. So, eight hundred dollars down every time that happens. Holy cow! So what I told him. Don't use that as an extractor at that point. Mm -hmm. Use it first. Yep. Use it on the good one so it don't strip. And then you get to send it out, get it rebuilt. So mm -hmm. he bought uh, a couple sets yesterday. Hopefully we fix him up to where that don't happen anymore. Cause you can imagine how salty that gets. Sure. Um, but you know, a lot of my guys that say, well, I already have the, the Allens. Well, that's great. You know, I've already had a bunch of tools that when they made a better one, I changed to this mm -hmm. one. Cause if yeah, I, well, nobody wants the second best tool or the third best well, tool. Well, that's right? my thing. When I'm doing, especially as a commission tech, when I'm doing a repair uh, that I am timed on, that that if I go over, I ain't making no money. Sure. I'm losing money. I would rather go ahead and pay to have that tool that I know it goes smooth mm -hmm. and I don't have to fight it because everybody knows that when you see uh, a the tap and die set out, you're having a bad day. Well, let's not have that bad day. Sure. Let's just go yeah. ahead and eat prevention yes. is the key, right? Like right. prevention. And that's why, you know, I was glad that they, they named these what they did. And that was rounding prevention yeah. technology. So that, and that's the way I'm trying to tell people to look at it. Don't look at it as just an extractor. Don't look at it as just a, a an Allen. Uh, and I had a couple people that say, well, it looks kind of like a torch. No, it's definitely not a torch. Um, mm -hmm. But sell it as both, use it as both. Well, see, Max RBRT is rounding bolt removal technology, right? So I had a lot of people, and this is not ignorance. I don't, I wouldn't consider it ignorance. I think it's just people that don't know what the hell they're talking about. That's right. running their mouth. They said, oh, they're just copying the Mac RBRT. Well, the truth is, and this is the truth, I don't care what you hear on any other platform, I 100% know the truth to this. Grip Edge is on, the patent is Grip Tooling Technology. That's who owns the patent for RBRT. That's who owns Grip Edge. You know, RBRT was an exclusive tool to Mac, just like, you know, your wrenches and ratchets are made for you guys, right? So they had an exclusive agreement with Mac. So it's hard to copy right. when you're the original maker. So there's the truth of the whole deal of the- Boy, you went down a hole there. <laughs> the um, grip edge stuff, so. You know, and, and I don't think people realize how common that is. Yeah. You hear all the time about how, uh, and I'm not gonna throw names out, how the, the, this company makes everything. No, they don't. Mm -hmm. No tool company out there makes everything. Most of everything is sourced out and it's an idea off of somebody else's idea. Yeah. Um, that's just the tool world. Mm -hmm. That's the way that it works. Um, but marketing is key, right? Um, I think the way that they've started marketing their own product uh, to do both, I think it's really gonna work out well. 
but you talk about prevention that goes the same way with your wrenches yeah. your screwdrivers mm -hmm. we've talked about it before mm -hmm. uh, a good wrench uh will will save you and a socket will save you in the long run because if you buy something cheap that's going around it off yeah there you are um and that's what i try to tell all my my tech starting off you know they they talk about sockets they talk about screwdrivers especially phillips Round the Phillips head screw oh, off. Oh yeah, because there's nothing to get it out. That's you right. Know, you have to drill it out at that um, point. You know, if you can't get it with vice grips or something. That's but. right. And if you're doing a Toyota Tundra timing job and it and it rounds uh, on the AC compressor, you have just screwed yourself. So <laughs> have a good screwdriver. You think those are those Japanese? What do they call them? The um, there no, that one's not. But now Toyota does have a lot of those that you're talking about. What is the name of those? Man. Like my brain has just quit for is a minute. Is it GIST or something like that? Japanese Industrial Standard, J-I-S. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, a lot of people don't even know about those. And yeah. we Maco, And they look like Phillips. They do. Maco has some coming out. We saw them at Expo. And I'm going to tell you, as a Toyota technician, I, fe I felt like an idiot. Because I had never heard of that, ever. <laughs> the whole time I was working on it, ever. Yeah. And then I'm up there, and they're like, well, this is a Toyota mass airflow sensor. And I'm like, well, that's just a Phillips. They're like, no, it's not. I'm like, it looks like Phillips. And then they show you the difference. They show mm -hmm. you the contact that it makes. It's different. It's got a flatter point right. instead of the real sharp point like yeah. an American Phillips has got. And, and and it's, there's some other differences. It's crucial. The mass yeah. airflow is the number one thing that you see on the Toyotas that get rounded off, too. It's because of that. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah, it just doesn't make good contact. It's having the right tool. Um, but yeah, I, I've seen, uh, especially at like body shops and stuff, uh, I've heard a lot about they don't want a cheap socket to where it rounds. I've also mm -hmm. got a Harley, um, it's a motorcycle shop, but they work on primary Harley. That's it. That's all they work on. So, uh, uh I guess I should have said solely, but, um, their owner will not let them use a cheap socket because the people that have the Harleys, of course, they're very expensive. They do not want any rounding on the bolts and stuff like yeah. that. So you um, need to sell that Harley guy set of those RPTs. That's it. Because I actually got a video with Dan that he took bolts out of his Harley, the chrome plated ones, to show that it wouldn't damage them. Yeah. So that tells you a hundred percent sure if the guy's doing it on his own bike. That's it. On video. That's it. To show you that it's not going to mess it up. And Harley is those type of people that own Harleys. They know how expensive they are. Oh, they yeah. they they're usually pretty, uh, they're usually pretty picky. So uh, the I'm HD gonna, stands for hundreds of dollars. That's is it. What that stands I for. can personally vouch for if you go into a Harley dealership and buy anything. I don't care yep. if you buy anything. It's a hundred dollars. My my dad had one. I had one and. Uh, every time we'd go in there, we'd buy something for uh, my oldest child at the time was real small. And just, I mean, her feet wasn't that big. The yeah, boots were really. over $100. Yeah. And, of course, she got them. But either way, you know, $100 for sure. But prevention is key to keep you from getting behind uh, and may protect your sanity a little bit. Because there's been those jobs where I thought I was going to go crazy. <laughs> so, uh, we've been... No doubt. We've been talking about that a lot this week, and and the screwdrivers come up, sockets come up, wrenches come up. Uh, you, your cheaper wrenches, which I just noticed, I've spilt these all over the place, but uh, I'll just grab one since it's like that. Your cheaper wrenches, if you're not careful, these are spread. And you're like, mm -hmm. no, they won't. They'll break for no. They'll spread. Yeah, they'll Next thing slip. you know, you rounded yeah. it, and so uh, we've got the the grooves cut in here, so that helps prevent that, and then of course the spline on the back. Cheap, be careful with cheap wrenches as well. Now, of course, if you're not an everyday technician and you're not working on it every day, I can understand. I don't want to spend that much money. Yeah, but still round one off and you get uh, round one that off and cussing monkey comes out at that point. You know? Quick. That's when you start throwing tools and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's probably not the good. That's when your insanity is being tested. Uh, one other thing, we showed the ratchet last week. Um, we showed the redesign and stuff like that. I saw a couple of questions about the locking design for the flex head, mm -hmm. uh, and just so happened we had a meeting this weekend, uh, and they were talking about that the redesign is already in process to improve the locking design as well, because it does have times uh, to where the head will get to where even locked it will move, so they are they are fixing that as well. So Are they going to redesign the 3-8 paws and stuff too, you think? Or? Yes. Um, 
from my understanding, they're they're going to redesign them to make them all to where they're to that standard. Um, so that's good deal. That's pretty exciting in that. So we'll get it all fixed up. Cool. All right, guys. Well, hopefully y'all learned a little tool something and some tool history and some tool knowledge and just some tool talk. Now on the the Grip Edge guys, uh, Maco does not have that right now. So if your dealer doesn't have it and he can't get it, it is what it is. You yeah. know, don't be mad, but just throw it out there. <laughs> Well, he just got to know where to get it, right? That's and it, right. it's really easy to figure out where to get That's it. That's right. So. All right, guys. Like always, thanks for hanging out with us today. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over for merchandise. Cool tools and discount codes down here. If you're not subscribed, click that button. See ya.